<laughs> oh god y'all are hilarious <laughs> but today is gonna be good um how many of you i had a good sleep last night Amen. y'all pray my strength lord help me <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> appreciate it yeah i pray my strength in the lord man this was i tell you it was um god has been doing some great things and um but i am so excited because every time um i share all the time that every time um i'm asked to speak i'm a firm believer like i used to when i first started in ministry like uh 30 years of stuff ago i used to study to preach you know, you know, uh, our pastors, you know, they were like, you know, you always want to have a sermon ready. And I did. I for the first maybe 10 years um, when I knew I had to preach, I would be up going through scriptures, got all my Greek, Hebrew and everything. And and you preach and then you like, wow, you know, that was a good word. But then you would go home and don't live it. And I got tired of doing that, you know, because there were a lot of messages I preached in my early years that I could not live out. And I told God, I don't want to be one of those people who preach just to preach. I said, if, if this thing don't work for me, I'm not saying it. And what I began to see that when I made that declaration, God began to start doing things in my life. A lot of these principles that's in this Bible, I started seeing happen in my life. And I then asked the Holy Spirit, what do you want? If you want me to say something, you know who's going to be there. You know what the need is. And every time I do that, he gives me exactly what the need is. So guess what? You are the chosen ones to get what you got to hear today. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so your labor was not in vain. Your trip was not in vain. So, uh, but listen, let's give um, our amazing Pastor Al Sister Vivian a wonderful hand. I know they're not here, but we we do thank God for them. And I don't take it for granted that they um, would ask me to cover for them uh, because they they're very watchful of who stands behind here because uh, they care about you so much. They do care about you a lot. And um, because they know that there's a lot of there's a lot of people, bless you. There's a lot of people out here. Uh, there's a lot of uh, wolves in sheep clothes who would um, you would be shocked at the things that um, sometimes us preachers know. You will be amazed at sometimes the people who want to come and preach to you and why they want to preach to you. you will be shocked i can tell y'all some stories that i think y'all will be like are you you are literally lying to me i'm not i have seen i think almost everything you can imagine <laughs> and it made me go back into prayer and say god something is wrong then i begin to read the bible and the bible is clear about the kind of people that's going to be in the last days it's very clear about the kind of false teachers that's why the scripture says you shall know them by fruits so don't don't get caught up with how articulate a person speak look at fruits fruits will tell you if that's an orange tree apple tree i was gonna say a banana tree is it a banana tree yeah okay it's a banana tree. <laughs> okay i'll just check it <laughs> so i begin to understand that because so it's going to make sense to you the one scripture where jesus says many going to stand before me and say lord lord we've preached in your name and did this and he's going to say i don't know you the reason why i don't know you is because you did things in my kingdom but i did not authorize you and if i don't authorize you that mean i don't know you that mean if if i owned a business and let's say this was my uh my facility and i paid you guys I called you and I said, listen, um, you two, if y'all can clean this section, if you can clean that section, if y'all can clean that section, I'm, I'm pointing you to sections, right? And then somebody sneak in and start cleaning and they do a good job. They actually mop the floor better than all my workers. There's only one problem though. <laughs> so they did my work, but I don't know them. I hope that is helping y'all. <laughs> so this is why we want to know Jesus. We want to know him because um, it's it's really important. So the reason why I shared all that is because um, this morning I, uh, well, actually last night, 
um, after we left our service and we celebrated our wonderful sister Cheryl. <laughs> It is so, I'm so proud of you, our sister, for, that is such a great accomplishment. We are really, we're really proud of you. And uh, so when I went home, I, uh, first thing I said was, all right, Lord, um, these are your people. What do you want your people to hear? And, you know, I, I, I sat there, I was playing with my daughter, and immediately this dropped in my heart. So I hope you guys are ready for it. Uh, please get your Bibles, because I do want you to, um, really to understand what the Holy Spirit is saying here. So let's go to uh, Matthew. We're going to go to the book of Matthew today. Um, this is going to be some good stuff. This is a scripture. This is something that really helped me in my journey with the Lord. So I pray that this be a blessing to you as well. Um, so let me just bless the 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 reading of the word before we go into it. Father, I thank you so much for what you're about to speak to our hearts today. Thank you, God, for the privilege and the honor to be able to share your word. And I pray, God, that I will share exactly what you have given me to share exactly how you said it, that I don't miss anything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to give honor to God for a couple of some fuel station folk. These blessed, y'all see these blessed folks right here? They newlyweds. Look at them smiling. <laughs> Just a cheesing. <laughs> I tell you, we are so honored. I love them so much and definitely love all you guys. You guys are amazing. So let's go to Matthew chapter. Uh, let's start at uh, Matthew 5. And um, I pray that you, you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And I, I do believe that you're going to be tremendously blessed by this. I do believe this. And um, Matthew 5, and we're going to go to verse 13. We're going to read verse 13 through 16. And then um, I may take you to another scripture. Then we're going to um, unpack this. Um, verse 13 says in Matthew chapter 5, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Verse 14 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Verse 15, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it and it give it light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Um, so I know many of you have heard this scripture before, uh, but I just want to take a moment to kind of just give you something to go home with. The first thing, now this is Jesus talking to us. He's talking to the multitude. He's saying, listen, you're the salt of the earth, meaning that um, you are here to add flavor. You are here to preserve. This is what salt does. Salt uh, brings flavor and it preserves. Now, the funny thing about salt, though, it is no good unless it's out of the shaker. Okay, so <laughs> so most people are salt, but they're stuck in the shaker. And God is like, I can't. This is this. It's not doing its function. You were made to do something, but you're not doing it. So one of the number one things we want to understand is that he sees us as salt because um, the thing about salt that I love is that salt does its best work when you can't see it. So let me show you this. And I always use this analogy about if we were, um, you know, had a nice big piece of steak and um, y'all know I, I love talking about food. Uh, <laughs> Y'all pray my strength. Uh, <laughs> you get this nice big T-bone steak, right? And then all of a sudden, you put some salt on that steak. It's funny how, what the salt does. The salt actually dissolves inside the steak, which is a sign that the salt is going to work. So sometimes God will put his chosen vessels like you all and all of us. He'll put you in areas where you can dissolve in it. But look at that thing he put you in, stuff that's greasy. <laughs> yeah, all that excess fat. But you are there to change it. Lord, I'm tired of this. I'm going to get out of here. He's like, wait, you're the salt. I need you in the steak. 
Oh, Lord. So, so if the salt, but watch this, but he says something. He says, but listen, but if the salt lost its savor, meaning the thing that it's supposed to do, it's good for nothing. Meaning I, I made it for this and it's not working for that. He says, I can't do nothing with it. Now, the thing, the reason why I'm showing this is because the worst thing, what he is really showing here is that one thing God is showing about his kingdom is that God does not like waste. How many of you like waste? I had to repent a couple of times because, um, you know, one time uh, me and my wife was cleaning out our refrigerator and I could not believe how much stuff I threw in the garbage can that I didn't even open up. And I felt, so, uh, -oh, uh oh, I see y'all tapping each other. <laughs> oh, I, I, I ain't by myself. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Because I started when I begin to when I do missions and I go places where people will walk three miles just for the thing I just threw in the garbage. I said to myself, God, forgive me. Forgive me. I just threw away that bag of potatoes that I bought and just let it sit there and look at me. And people would kill for that bag. So wasting is not something God like. He don't want us to waste our life. He don't want us to waste our gifts, our talents. When he gives us something, he expects us to use it. That's why he was really hard on the guy who had the one talent who buried it because he did nothing with it. OK, so we have to understand that God, when he gives you something, he does not want you to waste it. Now, where is this coming from? Because I'm going to talk to you today about closing the vents now. This is going to make sense because um, when I first got into my house, um, you know, my house is pretty big, but I, you know, I was upstairs. House is brand new. I'm excited. Furnace, everything is new. And I hit my first winter season and I cranked the thermostat up to, um, I think it was it like 74, maybe. And I'm upstairs in my room and I'm like, why is it so cold? I mean, it was cold and I knew I turned the furnace on and I heard the furnace. I heard the air blowing, but I was still cold. So I'm sitting here like something is wrong. So I'm about to call the furnace guy to come fix this furnace. I'm sitting here thinking there's a problem. I'm going around checking everything. I turn open my vents in my um, room to make sure and I hear the air coming through the vents. And I'm like, so I go downstairs, I'm checking all the vents, everything is working. And so I actually did call the guy because I said something is wrong with my furnace. He was like, he came over, he saw, he said, this furnace is brand new. Nothing's wrong with this. I said, so why am I getting no heat? He said, oh, right here. So he walks in the basement and he closes the basement vent. So my basement was smoking hot. <laughs> I went down, I'm like, I'm about to move my bed in the basement. And I'm like, and he was like, oh, if you want more heat up there, close the vents down here. And what he was showing me, what the Holy Spirit was showing me was, sometimes God is putting stuff in us, but we got vents open that need to close. So it's heating the wrong rooms in our life. <laughs> God, why don't I feel your presence? Maybe it's his presence is in the basement. Maybe his presence is left because you're watching too much of the wrong. So too much wrong stuff is coming in. And I'm about to show you. Turn to Matthew chapter six. This is about to connect now because this is God. What he wants us to know is if you want to experience the fullness, if you, if you want to not waste anything, you don't want to be salt that's wasted. So the way you don't waste it is look at your life and be like, what areas of my life do I need to close some vents? Because there is some things that I'm giving my precious ointment to that I shouldn't be. This kind of sounds something like don't cast your pearls before swine. Y'all heard that before, right? All this. Who in here would do that? Honestly. If you had like a million dollars of pearls, who in here would actually get a bunch of pigs and go, come on. And I, I know I don't know if they respond to that, but <laughs> come on, come on. And all these pigs. <laughs> who would just take all your pearls and put them before them? <laughs> but we do it with 
friends, people who just drain and they drain you and you know it and you still, girl, what you doing? I'm, I'm doing nothing. What you doing this Friday? And everything, and the Holy Spirit's like, listen, just lock yourself up in the, lock yourself up in the house and just read the Bible. And, and that, and that, and that uh, swine friend come, what you doing? Hey, let's go to the party. And the Holy Spirit's like, but I'm trying to give you some pearls and I'm trying, but, but these people are coming to keep the vents open. So the thing that is valuable, I'm giving it to people who don't appreciate it. That basement had no right to take all my heat. <laughs> it took all my values. What is these concrete walls doing being warm and I'm up there freezing? The wrong, I am warming the spiders in the basement. I'm warming all of the insects that come through the windows. Why are they getting the heat? <laughs> I wonder how many of us is doing that. Everybody else, you, you, everybody else, you got a word for them, but we don't have a word for ourselves. We can't even pray for we pray for everybody else, but we don't know how to pray for us. That means we have learned how to give our light in the wrong direction. So let's go to Matthew six. I hope y'all being blessed by this. <laughs> Look at Matthew six verse um, <laughs> verse. 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Verse 23, but if thy eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light is that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? What he is saying, he says that your eye is the light of the whole body. So whatever you want inside the body, it comes through the eyes. Now you can see how the devil is attacking us. He's constantly putting things in front of our eyes to make the inside of us be full of darkness. That's how it works. This is why he puts, this is why there's so much money invested in the media, so much money invested in advertisements, so much money invested to constantly put things before us to keep these eyes dark. Why is that happening? Because remember, we are the salt. And if the salt loses its taste, it's good for nothing, which means I will be calling myself a Christian, but nobody know it. I'm the most hateful person at the job, but I tell everybody, hey, come to church with me on Sunday. That's what the devil would love because we're losing our effectiveness. And the reason why we're so hateful is because we got hateful things coming in our eyes. We're exposing ourselves to all type of thing. Now, the thing, the word here, look, listen to this word that I love. The word here in verse 22 says, the light of the body is the eye, if their eye be single. The word single in the original means clear. If your eye is clear, the whole body will be full of light. That means, and we have an amazing cameraman right here. Listen, if y'all ever want some pictures, go to that brother. That man could take some photos. Lord, help us. So you will understand this. If you have an amazing camera and the lens is dirty, what happens? Pictures out of focus. Now, the camera is still good, but the image doesn't come out right. So I always tell people, if I, that's, you, when you hear me speak a lot of time, you hear me say things like, if I was the devil, if I was the devil, I say this to kind of wake you up to see how he's attacking you. He doesn't care that you're a camera. Just let me get to your lens. Make, let me make, put some smear on your lens. I don't, you can be the most expensive camera, but all your pictures go be blurry. Which means you're good for nothing. I can't post this on Facebook. <laughs> I'm too embarrassed on this, the way this look because my image is smeared based on a bad lens. So what the scripture is saying is cleanse the lens so, every, so the effectiveness of the camera can work. That's why he says the light of the body, this body, the light of this body. So in the earlier stages of my 
when I first began ministry, I struggled and I, and I, I really did. The first five years that I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you right now, them first five years was the hardest five years of my life. I could not, I was addicted to things. I, I was going to church and I couldn't break certain habits. And then I'm like, what is wrong? And then God began to show me. He's like, listen, you, and, and, and we just started a new uh, teaching series last night at the church called uh, Sanctified in the Kingdom. And what we're talking about is how the process of sanctification because what most people get wrong is that they get saved and then they expect everything to change in one night. <laughs> and then they get discouraged that they don't see the change. And then the devil come in and say, see, if you were saved, you wouldn't be doing this no more. Well, that's what sanctification is all about. So that's a whole nother teaching. But the reason why I'm sharing that is because those first five years, I didn't understand what God was doing with me. What God was doing with me was he, was, he was pretty much doing this. He was trying to teach me, if you want to experience the blessings of following me, serving me, being with me, you're going to have to close some vents. Because I had too many things, too much light coming into the lens, causing a glare on my images. I didn't so perfectly I, you do it right you're in, you're in here you don't we don't have any windows in here well I think there's some back here but you see how all these lights are being controlled because we controlled the natural light does that make sense so if you want to bring some control in your life you got to con start controlling some of this unnecessary lights that's trying to come in so you got to start saying things like at 10 o'clock I'm shutting my phone off Because now you, and every two minutes, zzz, 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 that's why you're waking up tired every morning. Because we don't have any borders around us. And I'd had to, that was the hardest thing for me to do, is to start shutting off the cell phone, turning off the TV. That was hard, because I used to grow up going to sleep watching television. You know, back in the day, y'all y'all remember, I mean, those of y'all from the 80s, 70s and 80s, y'all know what it was like going to sleep and, and at a certain time they start playing the, the American song. Dun, 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 dun. That mean all networks is shutting down. <laughs> and after that song, every television station was over and you wake up and you just see <laughs> until the next morning. <laughs> Yeah, that was actually a blessing. <laughs> but but now we have so many things to keep our vents open. All the hit, all the air. Y'all hear this wonderful air condition? Is that air condition or heat that I'm listening to? I don't know if it's anything, but I hear some. But imagine if that air conditioning unit was on right now. And then we open all the windows in the building. <laughs> It would be crazy for us to do that. But we do it spiritually. Perfect example, we're hearing this word today about closing vents. And I will promise you, we're going to take something that's precious and we're going to go home and still open windows. And then by tomorrow, we'll forget about closing vents because of all the other distractions that's about to hit you when you leave here. That's how it works. So this is why it's hard to get people to grow. So one of the things I've learned with this, now there's a scripture that I know you guys know. It's in Proverbs chapter 4. I'm going to ask one of y'all to read it. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Um, somebody who bless. If you can read that out loud for us, out loud, because um, I just want you to see that the Bible has been telling us this for a long time. But Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, this is going to help you understand why we're talking about this. Anybody have it? I'll go ahead. Do y'all hear that? Guard your heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Why would he say keep your heart, guard your heart? Somebody, somebody uh, chime in. Why would he say guard that? 
Huh? It's precious. So how can we guard it? Somebody tell me. What's some things we can do to guard it? Have limited access to it. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, good, good. Anyone else? Stay in the word. word. Good. So he's saying in Proverbs, keep thy heart with all diligence for, watch this, for out of that heart is all your issues. Relationship issues, emotional issues, mental issues, everything coming from that heart. So if you don't guard that, now you can understand why the mental health institutions are taking over because we're not protecting our vents are wide open we have so many things we have all this precious stuff and what's so crazy is i had to actually change because when i first became a minister and i was working full-time at the church we had people coming in for counseling at the church and I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you the truth. We will sometimes counsel and pray for the same people three times a week. And then tell them what they need to do. And then they will call the church office the next week and we will have to set up some more counseling times. And one day, me and the pastor and the associate pastor, we sat down, we said something is wrong. Something is very wrong because these aren't new people coming in. This is the same rotation of the same people coming in with the same issue. And I'm like, something is wrong. So one day, somebody, uh, they stopped me and, uh, Minister Sata, can you, uh, uh, you know, do you have uh, a moment this week to talk about it? And I told him, I don't. I do not. Well, because I still need help. And I guess somebody take a guess what I said. I said, did you do the last? Did, did you do the last thing I told you? <laughs> well, I do that first. Because you might be shocked that you're going to start feeling some heat. <laughs> Close the vent first. And you might start feeling some heat. You may not ever call me again if you close your own vents. <laughs> Imagine if me calling the furnace guy every day, he would be like, something wrong with you, not the furnace. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? So if he's telling me to close the vent in the basement and I'm still calling him, either I didn't understand what he said or something is wrong, or, or there's a lazy spirit that overtook me. <laughs> then you putting, bring it to the spiritual, and you have people who's constantly, Pastor, can you do this? Pastor, can you do this? Pastor, can you pray for me for this? Pastor, can, and that's good. Pastors want to do it, but pastors want to see you close your own vents too. And people are like, listen, I'd rather the pastor do everything. I ain't going to read my Bible. He going to tell me what to read. I always tell people, when you stand before the Lord, your pastor ain't standing next to you. You better make, listen, I've been telling people to get in that Bible, get in that word. You in the day now that, listen, at, you are in a day that you better know the scriptures. This thing is, when I tell you, these people, in, there's people in China that will die to have what we're doing right now. If they were doing this in some places in China, the government will come in and, 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 and bring them all to jail. They don't have the freedom like this. So they're trying to come to the United States so they can do this. And we're here in the United States free to do it. And we don't want to do it. And the, when the moment will come that all the hell is going to come against the church. And guess what? The church people will then go say, can we have church tonight? Can we have another service tomorrow? Why you want it now, but when you had it, you never went. I can tell you why. We did not protect our heart. We've just been letting anything into our soul. Everything comes into our eyes. Our salt don't even taste like salt. 
So the enemy is like, hey, I'm listen, I am okay that you're a camera with your dirty lens. I'm okay. I invested into a nice camera. And I tell you right now, I remember the first time I, I did a video with that camera. <laughs> and I, you know, after it finished and I played it back, I was so disappointed. I was disappointed because I didn't, the focus was so off, I did not take time to diligently get that lens cleansed. And so it made everything that was in this view look focused, look off focus. And I was so like, what happened? So now I'm thinking something's wrong with the camera, nothing's wrong with the camera. It's just that I did not take time to cleanse the lens. And what God is trying to get us to hear today is please get back to the place where you start saying, let me let my eye be single. That's why the scripture in verse 23 says, if thy eye be evil, meaning distracted, your whole body is going to be full of distractions. So when God speak, we won't even know if that's God speaking, the devil, me, uh, Shaquisha. Uh, <laughs> we won't know who talking because we got a lot of voices coming. And our lens is being overly exposed. We just got so much garbage coming in. Oh, and let me give you a scripture. Go to first. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go to first. I hope I, I hope you guys are taking these notes down. Go to first Thessalonians chapter five. Um, let me give you this, because this is something that I'm, a, I'm, I'm working on myself. So I'm not up here standing like I'm a uh, like I've arrived. This is something I am working on. Um, personally on my life. So first Thessalonians chapter five, let me read you this because this is something that a lot of people, us believers definitely don't um, pay attention to, but look at what Paul is telling to the, the church of Thessalonica. Look at verse um, 16. It says, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Verse 19, quench not the spirit. Verse 20, uh, despise not prophesying. Verse 21, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Y'all see that? Hold fast to that which is good. Now, somebody read verse 22. Abstain. Y'all know what abstain means? Stay away from all appearance of what? Raise your hand if you have saw evil before you got here. See, we, we are so delusional, and I'm not saying us, but I'm saying, so this morning, I, was, I had my little Bible app. I'm going to show you how funny this is. I had my little, my, my little Bible app and I was uh, reading and at the bottom there was this little ad that popped up on the app of, of Marilyn Monroe. And I'm like, on my Bible app? <laughs> I hit the little X and it went away. But we are so desensitized to evil that we don't even abstain from it no more. Most people would have kept on reading it. You know, you know. With this thing on the, because watch this, going back to cameras again, if you, if you got a main focus and there's another focus on the next side, sometimes the lens is like, which one y'all want me to look at? You see what's happening? So that's why ads are so important. That's why they pay millions of dollars. They'll put that little ad scrolling the bottom because they understand if I can get this before your eye, it's going to make what's inside you dark. They know that. That's what that you can. <laughs> Somebody named the top name brand purses. What's the top name brand purse? Michael Jordan. I'm hearing a lot of Michael Gorge Gucci. OK, Gucci. Now, now, how did y'all heard about how did y'all know about these purses? <laughs> Commercials or TV. <laughs> but somehow you had to you had to get information about this item 
to even purchase it or whatever. So that's what advertising does. It puts something in front of you so you can see something that you didn't know was present. Does that make sense? So that's how the devil works. He don't, he know that you, he know that you, listen, you're focused on Christ. So he's like, I gotta get, find a way to, let me just put an ad over. I'm like, this is a Bible app. Why is Mary Monroe in my Bible app? <laughs> That's not by accident, guys. And the scripture says, abstain from all appearance of evil because they understand, the, because Paul understand the principle we read in Matthew. That if you're going to walk this thing, your eye will have to be like this sometimes. I don't want to see this. So y'all think this is by accident that they now have to have uh, transgenders come into schools where kids at four years old talking to them. Why are they doing that? Them kids don't know what them, they are saying. It's what they see. That's how it works. It desensitizes you. And Paul says, abstain from it. And most people, we go towards it and say, well, I, it don't affect me. And you have no idea that the vent is opening every time you put yourself in front of this. My Lord. I just came to get y'all what he told me to say. <laughs> so I don't know about y'all, but today I'm closing some vents in my life. I have a, I had a lot of vents opening that I did not realize. You know, y'all know that feeling when y'all laying in bed and you feel a cool draft and you're like, and you realize your window was cracked open. What do you normally do? You get, you get up. You don't ask the Holy Spirit to do it. <laughs> you like, Holy Spirit, close my window. <laughs> Well, that's how we treat God. God, stop, stop all this sin. God is like, I've done my part. I've already given you everything you need pertaining to life and godliness. Your job is to now do what Proverbs says. Keep your heart. Keep those lenses clean. Because I'm telling you, and you know, and y'all know the worst thing is when y'all driving on the street. And you, you know, I remember one time, oh my God, I was driving and you know, I'm just cruising and uh, an anointed bird, <laughs> he was anointed because out, out of all that space, he had a, he just had a perfect, because remember my car is moving. So if he's in the air and he releases his anointing, How did him releasing that over there in perfect timing, my truck goes boom, right on my windshield <laughs> and splatters right on my windshield. And, I'm, and now I'm hitting my wipers and my wiper smears it. <laughs> I said, that bird is anointed. Now, watch this. I'm driving, but I'm driving scared. I'm not driving with peace. I'm not driving with confidence. Mm. How does that apply to us? Did the devil smear our windshield? If he has, you will be saved without peace. You will be saved without confidence. You'll be waking up every day as a believer but timid. And I understand why we're timid because we can't see. So what I had to do was pull over. Thank God I had a little bit of fluid, but I didn't want to do it while I was driving because there were some other cars. So I pull over on the road and then I cleaned it off. And I was able to drive with the cop. So what the teaching that God wants us to see is that in order for us to get back to letting our eye be single, we're going to have to slow down sometimes and say, okay, there's, I, I'm letting a lot of, my heat is going to places that it shouldn't be going. My emotions are going to places that it shouldn't be. Why am I mad about, um, you know, God knows, I'm, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm being set free, y'all. Um, cause I had a, 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 a football demon on me some years ago. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I was, I was in the, I, listen, I was, uh, God just set me free recently from 
you know, those four Super Bowls we lost? <laughs> he did. I, I, I finally got my breakthrough. <laughs> and it took a while. You know, it took a lot of prayer and fasting. <laughs> but I made it. I made it. Now, it hurts when they lose. It do. I well, I do. But I'm not giving my emotions no more to a leather ball. I hope you see where I'm trying. To. I need I need to give these emotions to my daughter, my wife, people I love. Why am I giving it to a team that I don't even know personally? I'm losing sleep. Why would I give that pearl to swine? Why would I give all of this intelligence to people who don't even want to listen to it? So I'm about to go like this to my eyes. Some stuff I don't need to be looking at. Not because I'm trying to be self-righteous. It's because I'm trying to close some vents. I'm trying to protect my heart. I don't need to know everybody's newsfeed. I don't need to know what if we're I don't need to know every time the president is getting on getting on the airplane. I don't need to know every place he's going. I don't need to have Fox News on 24 seven just so I can feel relevant. I can be relevant. Just I, Hey, I can get 20 minutes of a little snippet and still connect. But I'm not about to give all of this energy and emotions to that. And, and that's why our salt is not being salty, because we have given it to Fox News on the television and people dying and going to hell right in front of us. And, and we walking past and talk about, oh, that's so that's a shame. <laughs> because the salt, the taste is gone. I think I asked I, I may have asked this at church. I, maybe you guys can help. Um, have, raise your hand if you all know people who profess to be Christians, but you don't want to be around them. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Look at, does, does, that, does that bother y'all about anything? Does that make y'all feel like a, now I understand about, I, I, you notice I didn't say, have y'all know, do y'all know people? Because we all know people, but I'm talking about those who profess that Jesus is their Lord, but you don't want to really hang with them or be around them. Somebody right. The salt has lost its taste. That's what it looks like. I don't know, but I want to be like that. And most times, I was sharing y'all earlier about the story in my first five years, and I'm closing with this. The first five years, the only thing that I did a little different from those first five years to the other five years was I started closing some vents. Because the first five years, I was giving, all, I would go to church and my pastor would preach so good. And I remember some of those messages really touched me. But I had some friends that when we left church, we, y'all remember Old Country Buffet? Who, who, who Lord Jesus. See, I felt an anointed on that. So, <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said this during the message. Lord, forgive me. Because I think some of y'all know about the, well, let me see if we're, you know, we're the closest one that. But Old Country Buffet used to be the thing. So we would go to church, Sister Lori. We would, we would, uh, the, you know, our pastor would preach good. And then a group of friends of us, we would go to Old Country Buffet and just, and just pig out for real. And it's funny because every time we went to Old Country Buffet, we never talked about the message. We never talked about what God said. We always talked about everything we shouldn't have. And those were vents that I left open. So I can never digest what the preacher was saying because as soon as I left church, the people who came around me would talk about other things that contradicted what I heard a couple of minutes ago. So those vents, it, it, it never got into my heart. So that's why those first five years was a struggle. So year number five, God began to start dealing with me. I ain't gonna tell y'all that testimony today. That'll be for another time. But God started dealing with me, which let me knew that he really needed me to submit to his will because he had a plan for my life. He didn't do it forcefully, but he just had a calling on me and he was just trying to tell me, listen, you gotta. So the first thing I did was I cut off those relationships. It was the hardest thing. It was so bad that three of them came to the church. They almost ganged up on me like they was about to jump me after church. 
because they felt betrayed. They started calling me a fanatic. They said, you too spiritual. You think you all that. You'd... And I told them, I said, it ain't that. I just want to know Jesus. Why am I coming to church and I don't know who this man is? I need to know who I'm believing in. They never talked about him. So I'm like, I started when they would go to concerts and stuff and I would go home and I would start reading the Bible. And they was like, man, where are you at? You were never with us. I started closing events and I, I started getting my eyes single. <laughs> then my eyes. Now, it, it, and the scripture says, if your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. So as I kept reading Sister Lori and Sister Cheryl, and I, I was reading and I'm like, I started feeling this light come on in the inside of me. Now I want to know him more. Now I want to please him more. Now I want to change because some vents started to close. And the heat started to do what it was supposed to do. I pray that this spoke to you today. I really did. I really did. So before we go, I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads and I'm just going to pray that we all will make a conscious decision to close the vents in our life because we all have some open. There's still some vents that I'm still closing. And we have to be careful, guys. Don't let the devil woo you to sleep with the appearance of evil. The scripture tells us as his people, abstain from it because it is affecting. It is affecting you. I know you say it doesn't, but it is really doing the work. And you're going to notice it when you try to get in God's presence. As you get in God's presence, it's a struggle. Why is this a struggle? Because there's darkness still inside from the vents being open. That's making it hard for me to just go in free. So, Father, today, I just pray for each person, Lord God, who is here. I pray that this teaching today, God, really helps us all. God, just look at our heart, God. All of us here today, God, we all repent for any events, any people that we got in our life, anything that we have put in our life that is, that is causing all this jewel, this pearls to be wasted. Father, I pray, God, that we would just, Lord, listen to you, Holy Spirit, and see what is it that we are doing? What is it that we're watching? What is it that we're listening to that is causing the air to go out of the wrong vent? God, we need you, Lord God. We want our eye to be single. Help us, Lord. There are so many distractions around us, God. Father, every day we're being distracted with things. Please help us, God, to not lose focus. Father, we know that we're in the last days. We know that you're soon to come. Father, we know, God, that we, we can leave out of here tonight and this can be our last day. We don't want to play with our soul, God. Help us and give us the strength and the anointing, God, to put you first. As your scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and everything will be added. Give us the power and the anointing to focus on you first. We love you, Father. I pray for everybody who's here in this place today. I pray, God, that you will reveal to them clearly the areas that they need to close some vents in their life so they can be everything you ordained for them to be. Father, I sense that you want to bless every person in this building. I sense that you have something for every person in this building. But, Lord, you're just saying, God, if we can just close the vents, keep our heart with all diligence. Father, then our whole body shall be full of light. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Amen. <laughs>